Hi there, and welcome back to Kids Church. Today, we continue our walk on North Cliff Hill, and we are keen to find out what ways walking is similar to living our lives as followers of Jesus. Did you know that God has created you for a purpose? A reason to be alive? It's very true. And the best way for you to discover that purpose is to walk with Jesus. The hiking experience is really fun and it's even more enjoyable with friends. Walking with Jesus is fun too. You may meet other people along the way that need to follow Jesus too. It is important for you to invite your friends to church so they can hear about Jesus and begin walking with Him too.
Oh, hi, Tash. How are you doing? Oh, hey, Owen. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good, thanks. That's good. How's your hike going? Oh, no, it's actually great, eh? But okay. I just thought I needed to take a water break. It's getting a bit hot. It is getting a little bit hot. I also decided to take a water Ooh. break. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Yeah, that's good. So what are you doing there? Oh, you know, I decided that I needed to, to spend some time with Jesus on a walk today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And I actually found this verse in John 8, verse 12. Can I yeah. tell you what it says? Yeah, what does it say? So Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Oh, that's so cool. That it's cool, eh? So cool, yeah. I know, but I'm struggling to like remember it, so I keep having to read it over and over again. Oh, have you tried to put it in like a song form or like a war cry? I have, but it's just no, nothing's working for me, if I'm honest. Oh, well, have you tried this yet? Mm. Uh, boom, boom. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me. Whoever follows me. Will never walk in darkness. Will never walk in darkness. But will have the light of life. But will have the light of life. Sure, that actually works. Yeah. Owen, what am I going to do without you? <laughs> that was know. so good. But I think we should teach it to someone else. I, should, I think Colin was a bit ahead of us, eh? You know, I, I actually saw him run past mm. me, but he didn't say hi. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he'll say hi now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Owen. Let's go. Let's go teach him. Okay, cool. You can get my water bottle. Hi there, and welcome back to week three of Walking with Jesus. We've already learned the first two steps. Firstly, read God's word. And step two, choose to follow Jesus. Today, we're going to be talking about a really interesting thing that happened in the life of Matthew. Now, you would have learned last week about how Jesus had called some disciples to follow him. And the first few disciples were fishermen. They were Jewish people. And then came the awkward day when Jesus asked Matthew to join them. Now, Matthew was a tax collector that most people didn't like. And Matthew had friends that most people didn't like. They were tax collectors. They were scum in the eyes of most of the people. There's a beautiful word that they use for it, and that is hamartalos. You can go and look it up if you're interested in the words that they use in the Bible. They were considered scum. And yet Jesus invited Matthew to join his group of disciples. And Matthew then had a brainwave. He thought to himself, hang on, if I can become a follower of Jesus, what about my friends? What a beautiful heart Matthew had. He didn't just keep this exciting new news to himself. He immediately thought about other people that needed to meet Jesus too. And so he asked permission to host a party, a banquet at his house. And he invited all of the people that used to be part of his friend's circle. These were people that were not popular in those days. In fact, most of the Jewish people looked down on them as sinners and judged them. And so Jesus surprised everybody by saying to Matthew, that's a great idea. And so they held a banquet at Matthew's place. And all of the people who up until this point, nobody considered holy enough, all of those people were the people that Matthew invited. Now, this really upset the Pharisees and the priests because Jesus was supposed to be a religious teacher and they were already judging everybody because they thought they were better than everybody else. And when they saw Jesus do this, well, they just lost it. And this is what they said. They said to Jesus, why does your teacher eat? with such scum. When Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. Now that's an interesting thing, where Jesus contrasted who he actually came to meet. He said he came to seek and save the lost. He didn't come to find the people who already thought they were doing things right. He came to those who had already messed up, who knew that they needed him, people who needed God's love and forgiveness. And we need to be careful that we don't get a heart like the Pharisees, where we think that we're too holy for such scum. 
we need to have a heart like Matthew that says that Jesus is for everyone and that we invite everyone to meet Jesus. Now, in Romans, it teaches us something very interesting. It gives us a promise and then it also asks us a question. In Romans, it says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But then it asks a question. It says, how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And that's an important thing. We believe that everyone who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved, but they won't know about Jesus unless we tell them. And we need to have a heart like Matthew that invites people to meet with Jesus. In Matthew's day, he had a banquet at his house. And maybe you want to have a party at your house too. That's great. But one of the easiest ways that you can introduce people to Jesus is to invite your friends to church. When you invite your friends to come to church, they can hear about Jesus, they can meet other believers, and they can find out about the promises Jesus has for them too. They can also learn how to follow Jesus and walk with him, just like you and I are learning. We need to have a heart like Matthew that invites other people to meet Jesus too. And whenever somebody meets Jesus and chooses to follow him, it causes an amazing celebration in heaven. I like to imagine it as an angel party. This is what it says. It says, in the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. That's in Luke 15 verse 10. When one person chooses to follow Jesus, the whole of heaven rejoices. I can just imagine the angels high-fiving one another and saying, yes, we've got another one who's met Jesus and who's following him. And so I want us to have a heart like Matthew. We don't want to keep this good news to ourselves. We want to invite our friends to come and meet Jesus too. And then one of the ways that you can do that is to invite your friends to church. So I want you to take a moment and pray about it. Who is it that you think you would like to invite to church? Who do you want to tell about Jesus, just like Matthew did? And we can invite people to follow Jesus and to be his disciples too. I hope you have a fantastic week and I hope you're enjoying reading the book of Matthew for yourself. Remember, read God's word, choose to follow Jesus and invite your friends to church. Those are our first three steps. See you next week. Start with a hello. Get them to introduce themselves and you introduce yourself. If they don't have a friend, just go to them and say hello. 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 Hey yo, my name is Sicky. I would just be like happy or just smile like this. They give me a big old smile. I would say, what's your favourite toy? Ask them what your name is. You could say, do you want to make friends? You ask a bit about themselves. We get at football. Yeah, pretty good. You just need to listen. It's kind of nice to listen to everybody when you're talking. When you're making friends, make sure you're really kind and polite. Okay. I just make sure everyone has to give the ball. You just share it, so you give it to them and you take turns. Just ask them, will you want to play with me? Good. Now I make sure they join in. Um, I play in a different game that they'll like. We, we draw together. I painted a portrait of my new best friend because V is special to me. I would just say, don't lean in if you like. Share your lunch, like sandwiches, like a cheese. Oh, you can share my lunch if you want. I share everything. I share all the toys. Sharing toys are important because if you do share the toys, they'll get happy. I just can't wait to show my new friends how much I love them. The Transylvanian way, of course. It's gonna be five soon. That means you're four. I am four, so I'm gonna be five soon.